So you or somebody you know has obviously talked about, hey man, I want to build or buy the most affordable AR-15 I can get. Well, let's talk about getting something that's affordable, but will actually shoot. Welcome back everybody, Clint here with Classic Firearms and today we're going to have a discussion all about affordable AR-15s. And in the intro there I hinted at, yes, there is either yourself or somebody you know that has talked about at some point in time, I just want an affordable gun to shoot and to work when I pull the trigger. And of course there's always the option of building your own, which I 100% recommend because it's not just building a gun that's a lot of fun, but gaining all of that knowledge and that experience and actually building your own AR-15 is awesome. And typically if you're out the range and something's going wrong with somebody else's gun, you might be able to say, hey. I ran into this issue or when I built mine, I know I had to pay special extra attention to the gas block because it wasn't properly seated or something like that. And it's just a little bit easier for you to figure out what's going on. And it's just good to know all of that information. All right, so building, I completely recommend. And if you are looking to go for the cheapest of cheap options, of course you can parts yourself together all sorts of cheap options and yeah you're probably going to get a gun that runs just fine. But if you're in the market, you're looking to buy maybe. Let's discuss a couple of options that are out there that are sometimes overlooked, especially by the crowd that's like, well, if it's not a contract gun or mil spec, bro, then I don't want it. Well, okay. So let's just talk about something a little bit more real. And first up, what we've got here is the Delton DTI 15. This is just a standard AR 15, uh, not even, you know, a, <laughs> Well, I guess you could look at this as an upgrade in a sense, a low profile gas block versus like your standard A2 of, you know, gas block with the integrated front sight post. It's a good gun. It works and it's gonna do just fine for you. And something that I like about, you know, some of the more affordable options that are out there is they actually use, you know, high quality parts. For instance, something as simple as what the gun is chambered in is going to mean a lot, 223 versus 556. For those of you that don't know, very similar cartridges. However, the pressures being generated from the 5.56 cartridge are much greater than the 223 cartridge. So if you have a chambered AR-15 or a 223 chambered AR-15, you might want to think twice about running 5.56 through it because you do run the risk of damaging your gun. However, this guy right here, and it is stamped very clearly on the barrel, DTI 1 and 9 twist, 5.56 NATO. Easy enough, right? So 556 NATO is what the barrel is and what the chamberings will be. So therefore you are good to run either 223 or 556 through this gun and you're gonna be doing just fine. Now, a lot of you know affordable versus high-end manufacturers will actually get some of their same raw materials from the same place. You can always tell that from the upper receiver up here. For this one, this right here just has a square marking on it. That also shows that I think Colt was using that at some point and things along those lines. It just depends on where they get their materials from. The real part that uh, it really justifies or tells you how quality a gun is. It comes down to the CNC machining of the gun and how the parts fit together and all that type of stuff, right? So something as simple as just being able to get the takedown pins out, which this one's actually nice and easy, that fits together pretty well. Let's actually just go ahead and drop the mag from this guy here. It's a heavy duty table, so don't worry about that. Thanks, Jacob Sawyer. But uh, anyway, how the gun actually fits together is a nice feature. Very limited wobble here, still gonna have a little bit, which that's inherent of the design of the AR-15, how the upper and lower fit. I do like the fact that I can't see through it. <laughs> uh, my service rifle, which is an FN by the way, has a lot more rounds to it than this new rifle out of the box does, that's for sure, but I can easily wobble those two guys all around and I can see straight through the upper and lower receiver and where they meet. The gun still works though, so how about that? But anyway, what the guns come with too, just a standard 30 round mag, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Standard hand rail up here, so just a heat shield, a hand guard held together by a delta ring. I actually don't mind this at all, really. If you're just, again, going for something basic, uh, that is fine. Typically what I would do, I would probably upgrade the rail. I mean, there's 
in Midwest Industries that make the quad rail or m lock rail two section drop in. Just pull back the delta ring, go for it, you're ready to go. Standard M4 stock, standard A2 grip, stuff that is just, you know, simply a standard. And we also made it the SIG Romeo, the Romeo 5 red dot. This thing is a fantastic red dot for what you get. And so you have a gun almost right out of the box, except having to drop an optic on it, and you are ready to head to the range and start shooting. And it's gonna work for you. I've, I've run several Deltons in my life, and they all run just fine. Granted, I haven't beat the crap out of them or torture tested them, but they work. Now let's move up to a brand that's a little bit more recognizable, and one that, is it worth paying the extra price just for a name? The Springfield Armory Saint. My personal opinion is, great firearm right out of the box. Is it worth paying for that Springfield name? I think so, and we're gonna talk about that here in just a moment. So Springfield Armory is a little bit bigger name than some of the companies that we have been or will be talking about. Uh, they've been around a little bit longer, but they're actually newer to the AR-15 game. They introduced their Saint line of AR-15s a couple of years ago, and since then they've just been making a lot of quality stuff. And for what you get right out of the box, you don't actually need anything else. It is just a great setup. So this one specifically here is their BCM model. So it does already come with the BCM warfighter stock here or gunfighter stock. And I gotta tell you guys, it's a fantastic stock option for y'all. Once you get it locked in position, it's not going anywhere. There's no movement whatsoever on this guy. And I'm offering quite the twist there on it. And so it really locks down into position. It's gonna be almost impossible for you to accidentally engage this guy. First off, there's a lot of tension here and just the way they placed it, and I think they teamed up with uh, Travis Haley on this uh, to design this, the way they placed this button here to actually manipulate the, the uh, adjustment on the stock, you're not gonna accidentally do it and then throw off your length of pull and then be like, oh my goodness, where am I going, right? It does come out of the box with a rear sight. You have that integrated front sight post gas block right up here, your standard what we call just A2 front sight post, and boom, there you go. Good rifle all around. Now, something I do love about the Saint as well is the fact that it does have a mid-length gas system on it. You have, I think, what, four different gas lengths. So you've got a pistol gas, le gas length, a carbine, a mid-length, a rifle length, and then I think the Mark 12 has its own uh, gas length uh, on it. But Different, different discussion. Anyway, another cool thing that you get right out of the box, more BCM furniture, you get an upgraded grip compared to like the A2 grip from the DTI. There we go, A2 grip has that little stupid finger knob there. If you guys have been around the channel for any length of time, you know, I'm not a big fan of that just because it's, it's not ergonomic. I don't know whose hands that fits, but it's not mine. Anyway, the BCM, nice, smooth, better stippling on the sides anyway, feels great. And also the BCM M-Lock rail up here. It is a polymer rail and it does have the M-Lock slots on it. So if you wanted to throw any type of extra grips or anything on it, like a BCM vertical grip, there you go. Or move over here, an angled foregrip, you can do that, which I am a fan of, kind of like, this guy right here. Now this is a whole different whole different ballpark when it comes to price, but we'll talk about it here in just a moment. But the angled foregrip is an option. QD, sling swivels, whatever you need to actually get this guy to be whatever you want it to be, all right? Move this stuff out of the way here for you. But anyway, the Springfield Saint line of ARs, just an awesome setup. You still get the Picatinny right up here on the upper receiver, which is pretty standard now. It's off of the A4 style. You've got the bayonet lug on here if you really want it. That's, you know, integrated on the front side post. Not sure if it's completely needed. But also, too, you're going to notice that this guy, 5.56 five, NATO chambering and a 1 and 8 twist. The 1 and 8 twist, I think, is almost perfect for most shooters out there. It's right in between the one and seven and one and nine. One and eight, I love that. So the again, the mid-length gas system on it, everything else I could ever want when it comes to just a quality AR for well under a thousand dollars. Perfect, and you don't need to buy a sight. You got, you got an iron sight. Get, get trained on iron sights before you buy an optic anyway. And then there's another brand out there that we actually did a manufacturer review of not too long ago 
and it is Diamondback. Diamondback has been around since the late 80s, making all sorts of cool stuff. Um, but what I like about their rifles, like this one right here, the DB15, is you are getting, again, more upgraded features from a base rifle. Sure, you're spending a little bit more money right out of the box for these items, but at the same time, it's not drastic, and you're getting you know, a standard Magpul stock. It's a little bit more ergonomic than what like your standard M4 stock is. You're getting a Magpul grip on it. Again, more ergonomic than an A2 grip. You're getting that aluminum uh, M-lock rail on it. And what I like about this rail is that it's actually free floating the barrel. It is that it's not making any contact with the barrel whatsoever. And because of that, you're actually going to be a little bit more accurate. Anytime you have contact on the barrel, that might mess with barrel har harmonics and you could be asked, uh, you know, you could be twisting or adding pressure onto the barrel and not even realizing it. And then that's going to be throwing your shot off down range. Granted, if you're not doing a whole lot of distance shooting, probably not that big of a deal for you. All right, that being said, it being M-Lock and then a little bit longer rail than what we've seen so far, this guy you can just do on whatever you want as far as any type of attachments go, as I've already mentioned. Pretty cool stuff. And this one here, we're just gonna go ahead and note something really quick. We've got the A with the dash through it there. Uh, as far as the materials for the upper receiver goes. Just wanted to be known that it is also the same raw materials that Springfield gets theirs from, at least for the upper receiver. Just thought that was kind of interesting and I'd throw that out there for y'all. So all these guns here, well under $1,000, they're gonna run for you, they're gonna do well. Some might come with a couple more features than others, but it really comes down to what you're looking for as your budget. And I'll be honest with you, for most of you out there, this is going to work just fine for you. If you've got $1,000 to spend, spend about 60% of it on a good gun, then spend some more on ammo, and then spend as much as you can on training. Because if you could have the most high-end stuff in the world, but if you don't know how to effectively put rounds on target at distance, at close range, know how to actually you know, do a simple reload and know your controls, then it doesn't matter at all because you will wind up in a losing situation, put it that way, all right? So go out there and get training. Also too, just wanna throw this out there, we did throw on a, uh, another budget option for a Red Dot, the Vortex Spark AR. I think it's a great little option. It's just a solid little build, has a nice little rubber over mold cover on it too, so, you know, shock resistant, things like that. But I've been running, you know, Spark ARs for a while, never had any issues with them. They've always run pretty well. So the Sig Romeo, still also a great option. I think it's probably one of the most popular options on the market right now as well. So check them all out, of course, at Classic firearms.com for all of our uh, products that you could ever ask for when it comes to 2A options, all right? But anyway, P-Mag, this one comes with, this guy also comes with the P-Mag. We've got one of our classic firearms branded mags in there because we've had this gun forever as just one of our range guns and to throw on different stuff to try with because we know the gun actually just works and runs reliably. This Diamondback does feel good though, so might just be a, another range gun, you know what I mean? Anyway, so, when it comes, again, to affordable guns, affordable ARs, affordable builds, make sure you are doing your research, getting quality products, especially if this is gonna be more of a defensive rifle for you because don't spare expense when it comes to your life. And that also means quality ammo, that also means quality training. So get out there, do the research, find some ranges that'll actually do some low, count, low round count drills with you. Again, just doing simple things at home, for me, it's driving my wife crazy when I'm just sitting there with my little battle belt on and all I'm doing is just practicing reloads, right? Here, drop the mag, go for the reach in the belt. Here, all right, cool. Doing simple things like that and just getting used to the controls and ergonomics of your gun will make you that much better of a shooter and cutting down some split times between reloads and things like that. Stuff that actually matters. Get out there, train, and practice. And for my final couple of thoughts, the perfect AR build for me, what I really like to have is a quality optic. I like to have a flashlight that you can use a streamlight or a surefire, whatever works for you. Just get something quality that's out there because you don't want your light, you know, blowing up on you or anything. Uh, but anyway, getting a quality light that's gonna work when you need it to is a good thing. Because why? Well, you wanna be able to identify your target in those low light settings. Because if you can't identify your target, you probably shouldn't be shooting at it. 
just throwing that out there. And the last thing that I'd really recommend is a quality sling. This is the Magpul MS1 sling. And another option is the McLean Core sling if you're going for something a little bit more close quarters. Acts as a single point sling, but it does have that administrative carry mode on it, which is an awesome feature. And we actually did the video talking about these and showing these off with the guy that designed it, Neil McLean. And so if you want to see a little bit more about that, he is a Navy SEAL. Go check that video out, it's pretty cool stuff. But anyway, quality sling, quality rifle, quality training, that's the big one, quality ammo, quality optic, and you guys are pretty much all good to go. Light, yeah, you'll be all set. So get out there, get shooting, and uh, if you are having a hard time finding ammo. I totally get that. We are still receiving ammo on a regular basis. However, if you want to be the first to be notified when we get some ammo in for the caliber you're looking for, make sure you are texting the word video to the number you see down below or taking a photo of this QR code. That'll prompt you to get set up for our text alert so that way you are the first to be notified when something comes live and in stock. If not, you pretty much missed the opportunity because it's going to sell out or the website might crash again. I'm, you get it, ammo, it's ammo getting. I know, it, it sucks, but it is what it is. All right, all that being said, last thing I wanna talk about is our current giveaway. This sexy beast, this right here is the Malat Vepper RPK, chambered in 762 by 39. We don't know how many more of these are gonna make it into the country or how many are actually left in the country to be available, so you might want to head to our website, classicfirearms.com, to get those entries. And of course, there's so many different ways to gain entries. One of those entry methods is a simple code word, and the code word for this guy is Malat. M-O-L-O-T. If you have no idea what the heck that is, then obviously you didn't watch our video announcing this as our current giveaway. So you might wanna go ahead and click on that and review, all right? So we'll leave it off there. Thanks again for stopping by everybody. We always appreciate you and your business. God bless you all. And we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.